My food addiction is killing me, and I know it's now or never. If I don't get the help that I need, I'm gonna die. I hate that I have to be taken care of. It's humiliating. I'm not liking people. How in the world do you get such a supporting wife? How did you find that? Carrie Johnson weighed over 600 pounds and spent her entire life battling this enormous burden. Her relationship with food was anything but healthy, often turning to it as a coping mechanism for significant trauma. One of the most heartbreaking aspects of her story is a botched weight loss surgery that tragically resulted in her father's death. That kind of trauma would drive anyone into a tailspin. This incident pushed her deeper into food addiction, and she soon found herself in a life-or-death struggle due to her escalating weight. I can't help but wonder how anyone could handle that kind of pressure. Because he was pretty big himself, and he had already surpassed the 500-pound mark. And his primary care physician told him that he wouldn't live for another year if he didn't have weight loss surgery. So he went in for the gastric bypass. He did fine through the surgery initially, but within the next 24-hour period, he became septic and ultimately passed away. They had left the stitch open in his new stomach, and it cost him his life. And when it happened, I went into shock. Speaking of pressure, let's talk about Carrie's family dynamics. Her marriage to Chris Johnson was hanging by a thread, thanks to her health issues and the emotional toll it took on both of them. But before Chris came along, Carrie had already been through the ringer. As a single mom, she raised her daughter alone for years, only to face even more heartache when an online romance turned abusive. Imagine trusting someone only to have them threaten your child's life. That relationship ended quickly, leaving Carrie to pick up the pieces. And then my husband started to get physically, emotionally, mentally abusive. And my biggest fear was that he was going to start hurting my child. I hid the abuse from my family for a long time. But when Haley was three, he started to include her in his threats. And when that happened, I came forward to my grandmother and told her about the abuse. And my grandmother paid the retainer for my divorce lawyer. Then came Chris, a beacon of hope in Carrie's otherwise tumultuous life. Their love story was sweet, but fraught with challenges. Both struggled with their weight, and after a devastating miscarriage and a hysterectomy, their bond faced severe tests. The inability to have a child together weighed heavily on them, adding to their emotional and physical battles. Yet, their on-screen candidness showed a couple deeply in love, even though they hadn't been intimate for over a year. The weight and health issues were really taking a toll, but their love for each other was undeniable. I was honest with Chris from the start about my size, and he didn't care. When I first met Carrie, I liked her personality, and I thought she was very beautiful. Carrie's size did not bother me. He's a wonderful dad. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to my daughter. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. When my mom and Chris got married, everyone was relieved and happy about it. Of course, I was happy that she wouldn't have to go through. Enter Dr. Now, the man who doesn't mince words. Carrie's first meeting with him was nothing short of a reality check. Dr. Now laid it all out there, bluntly stating that she was on a fast track to an early grave if she didn't change her ways. Sometimes you need that tough love to snap you out of it. He prescribed a strict 1-200 calorie diet focusing on protein and vegetables, and he didn't sugarcoat the importance of physical activity, no matter how small. You could see the wheels turning in Carrie's head. This was it. Make or break. I understand. You mean, what do you understand? What is your answer? I mean, I can do better. I know I can do better. Well, and everybody can do better, but why you haven't done it better? Is because your love of the food uh, supersedes your idea of uh, being healthy? Sure, yeah. Okay, so what can we do to change that? Um. Do you want to change that? Yes, sir. So what solution we got for you? Carrie's journey was far from smooth sailing. 
She hit bumps and hurdles along the way, but her determination shone through. Starting at over 600 pounds, she managed to get down to 442 pounds after a few months of rigorous dieting and exercise. This significant progress earned her the green light for weight loss surgery. Nerves were high, but the surgery went off without a hitch. A triumphant moment in her chaotic journey. Can you feel the relief? I sure can. It's back on track and okay because you made uh, good progress i'm gonna go ahead and improve you for weight loss surgery all right that's so, fantastic but i want to stay on the track so i'm gonna schedule you for weight loss surgery in a month and i want to use a uh, 20 pound by then okay yes sir so that's gonna be your goal you need to hit that goal and if you come back in a month you have lost 20 pounds then we're gonna cancel your surgery okay i understand Post-surgery, Carrie stuck to Dr. Now's advice like glue. She knew this wasn't a sprint, but a marathon and kept pushing forward. Watching her inspire Chris to join her weight loss regimen was heartwarming. Their mutual support became a shining example of what you can achieve when someone is rooting for you. By the episode's end, Carrie had shed over 200 pounds. That's a lot of weight off her shoulders, literally and figuratively. Her story is a testament to resilience and determination showing that no matter how dark things get, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Jerry had a slow start, but both of them are working hard and trying to make the changes they need. So from what I see, I'm confident they're going to stay on track and stick to it. And if they do that, Jerry will be able to get her target within the next year. So I'm feeling very encouraged by how hard she's working and how well she's doing. And I'm looking forward to seeing him make a lot more progress and get a better life here very soon. I'm really proud of me. Michael Blair, a 45-year-old from Texas, first appeared on the show weighing a staggering 609 pounds. Now, let me tell you, Michael's journey is one for the books. From the start, it was clear that he had a tough road ahead. Imagine being over 100 pounds at just seven years old. Childhood trauma and poor eating habits set the stage for a life marked by emotional eating. It's heartbreaking to see how past experiences can linger and affect someone for so long, isn't it? Because when I was just a few years old, my dad left my mom and I. So we had to move in with my grandparents. And my grandma was trying to keep me fed constantly. And by the time I was seven, I was probably close to 100, 110 pounds, and it made a perpetual cycle where I would get bigger, I would feel bad about being bigger, I would eat more, and I kept getting bigger and bigger. And the bigger I got, the less I wanted to be around other kids because they started to make fun of my size. And Michael faced numerous challenges, including molestation and depression. He found solace in food, using it as a support system until martial arts sparked a new interest in him. This newfound passion helped him lose some weight, but it was a short-lived victory. After getting married, poor eating habits crept back in and an accident prevented him from undergoing gastric bypass surgery. His weight skyrocketed to 600 pounds. The cycle of weight gain and loss can be incredibly disheartening, can it? It's like taking two steps forward and three steps back. Take advantage of me. He would have me take my clothes off, and he would molest me. But he didn't pursue me as much as the other boys. At that point, it had started dawning on me, but being fat, I was not desirable to pedophiles. So I assumed that the more I ate, the less desirable I would get by getting bigger. So I made it my mission to get bigger. And when I was around 14, I was 250 pounds. Thankfully, my mother took me out of the situation. Desperate for change, Michael decided to visit Dr. Now. If there's one thing you can count on, it's DR. Now, not mincing words. When Michael first met him, he was met with the classic dar. Now, stare. A mix of concern and disappointment, the kind of look that makes you question all your life choices. Dr. Now reviewed Michael's case and didn't sugarcoat anything. He told Michael his eating habits were killing him and that drastic measures were needed. Sometimes, the truth hurts, but it's necessary. You have to wonder, though, what would it take for someone to listen finally? You still go back to food and undo the surgery. It will be pointless in the long run. 
And that's going to be a, a significant issue that we need to work out, yes. okay? So we're going to do some blood tests on you today. But I'm going to say we have to have some more tests done on your heart and your lung and examine your scar tissue and what's going on in your abdomen and see what is the ability for you to have any kind of surgery down the road. Michael left that first meeting with a mix of determination and dread. Could he really change his entire lifestyle? The next few weeks were crucial. He had to follow a strict 1-200 calorie diet designed to shock his system into losing weight. Michael had dropped 61 pounds in three months at his second visit. There was some progress, but not enough to please. Doctor, now! It's like trying to steer a ship away from an iceberg. Every small movement counts, but is it enough to avoid disaster? Today we are going to do an endoscopy on Michael to try and determine if weight loss surgery is even a possibility for him. So we'll be putting a small camera down into his stomach to see how everything looks and determine if there be any issues that would prevent us from performing the surgery like gastric sleeve or gastric bypass on him. Normally, this wouldn't be done until the patient qualifies for surgery. But in Michael's case, I have concerns about some of his medical history. Moving forward, Dr. Now wasn't happy with Michael's progress and made it clear that he needed to double down on his efforts. The pressure was on, and Michael knew it. By his third visit, the stakes were higher than ever. He had lost more weight, but still not enough to qualify for surgery. Dr. Now's frustration was palpable, but so was Michael's determination. It's one thing to start a journey, but to keep pushing through the tough times, that's something else entirely. But you need to do more to cut back on your portions. Yeah, I got it. I understand. I'm only going to have 1,200 calories. All right, that's great. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, so, so bottom line, what do I have to do to get to surgery? If you get close to losing at least 150 pounds overall, then we can check again and see if there is enough pressure off your abdomen to do any surgery. So that's a goal for you. Finally, after months of hard work, Michael's persistence paid off. By the 10th month, he was down 97 pounds and even rejoined his martial arts training. The surgery was a success, marking a massive step in the right direction for Michael. By the end of the episode, Michael had lost a significant amount of weight. It's incredible to see such a transformation both physically and mentally. But it does make you wonder, why does it take hitting rock bottom for us to make a change? I am excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you, doctor. Well, you're welcome. I'm proud of you for sticking with it this long, so keep it up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll speak to both of you soon and see you at the endoscopy. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. See y'all later. All right. Bye, Bye thank doctor. You, doctor. Nathan, a 35-year-old from Texas, kicked off his journey weighing in at a staggering 607 pounds. From the very start, it was clear that Nathan's road to recovery was going to be a bumpy ride. I mean, can you imagine the physical and emotional weight this guy was carrying? So as much as I hate it because of how hard it is, I make myself shower every day. It's just hard to do because of my size. And sometimes I don't get as clean as I want to. Sometimes my wife has to help me, but when she's gone, I try to do it on my own. Some of the things that I do, Nathan specifically asked that it not be mentioned because I do things that not even a wife should have to do. So Nathan's weight struggle started way back in his childhood. His parents' divorce left a void that little Nathan filled with food. Now think about it, a young kid already dealing with such heavy issues and turning to food for comfort. It's sad and somewhat relatable, right? Nathan's mom, trying her best to manage, often opted for quick, cheap meals. Hello, fast food. This unhealthy relationship with food was cemented early on. Eating has always been a big part of my life, starting when I was really young. I think part of that is because my dad worked for a food company. So we constantly had junk food around us. You know, I'm the youngest of three siblings. I have an older sister and an older brother, and all of us, including our parents, just ate all day long. Food, it was almost like a headache pill would be for a headache because it made me happy. Nathan hit rock bottom when he realized his life was on the line. He had to change or he wouldn't see his kids grow up. Enter Dr. Now famous for his no-nonsense approach. Nathan's first meeting with Dar Now was intense. 
The stern-faced doctor didn't sugarcoat anything. He told Nathan straight up that his eating habits were a death sentence. Imagine hearing that. It must have felt like a punch in the gut. The severe medical issues with his body, that is a direct result of his weight. So he doesn't have any more time to waste. He either makes the significant changes he needs now, or things are going to continue to get worse for him until he pushes his body to a breaking point. And my concern right now is that he may be a lot closer to that point than he realizes. So it's very important he does this now, before he gets to that breaking point. Doctor now put Nathan on a strict 1-200 calorie diet. Can you even imagine going from thousands of calories a day to 1-200? That's like hitting the brakes on a runaway train. Doctor now's brutal honesty was a wake-up call for Nathan. If you don't change now, you won't live to see 40, Doctor now warned. Sometimes we all need that harsh reality check to snap us out of our ways. Nathan left the office with a mix of fear and determination. Would he be able to turn his life around? And his exercise. No, stop eating everything. He jumped right in, so I was really impressed. And I would say overall, he's doing great. So I really expected him to struggle more than he has. I don't even know how far we walked. About an eighth of a mile. <laughs> we, we can turn around if no, we need No, don't stop, son. I'm good. I just, it hurts. I try to walk every day for like 20 to 30 minutes. The following weeks were a test of Nathan's willpower. During his second visit, he had lost 72 pounds. Progress, sure, but not enough for Dr. Now. Nathan's journey was like trying to steer a massive ship. Every small effort counts, but is it enough to avoid disaster? Dr. Now's dissatisfaction was palpable, but Nathan showed a spark of determination amidst his disappointment. Moments like these remind you how incredibly tough and resilient the human spirit can be. You're down 72 pounds, huh? Yes, sir. So tell me what changes you made. The, the biggest change that I've made is I've really stuck to that 1,200 calories or less. That's the ultimate bottom line for me. Plus, I will not eat anything past 6 o'clock. I just, I've made it a point to make sure that I have dinner before 5, 5.30, so. All right, that's great. Well, I'm proud of you. But my concern right now seems but Months of hard work paid off for Nathan. By the 10th month, he had shed 193 pounds. The surgery was successful, marking a huge step forward. Watching Nathan's transformation was nothing short of inspiring. By the end of the episode, Nathan had lost significant weight. Seeing such a dramatic change, both psychologically and mentally, really makes you reflect. Why do we often wait until we hit rock bottom to make a change? It's a question worth pondering. My husband back like it was originally, but it's a work in progress. And maybe we'll get there. Who knows? It just depends on how things go. I'm not going to rush in, and I don't think he should either. How have you been doing? When Bianca Hayes' episode aired, she was 36, tipping the scales at a whopping 604 pounds. Living in Tennessee with her boyfriend Ramonte and their toddler daughter Marcia, Bianca's life was anything but easy. At a five-year-old son from a previous relationship, Simeon, and you have a full house. Funny enough, Bianca and Ramonte actually met in an online weight loss surgery chat group. Both had undergone gastric sleeve operations. While Romante kept his weight in check, Bianca, unfortunately, fell back into old habits during her pregnancy with Marcia, regaining all the weight she had lost. Bianca's weight has really affected the household kind of because Big Daddy got to do everything. I'm sick of it, really. She needs to get it together. We need to get it together because I need my help, mate. I'm an old man. She young, but she's not that active person she used to be. Oh, Jesus. Ramonte has had to do more and more for us because of how I struggle. And I feel bad for that, because all of that shouldn't be on him as much as it is. Now, let's talk about Bianca's diet. Imagine waking up to a breakfast that could easily feed a small army. Pancakes drenched in syrup, a mountain of bacon, and enough pastries to open a bakery. 
lunch and dinner didn't improve. Triple cheeseburgers, supersized fries, and soda by the gallon. And snacks? Anything and everything! From chips to cakes, all consumed in massive quantities. It's no wonder Bianca's weight spiraled out of control. So every morning, I can't wait to eat. And Ramonte is a good cook, so I look forward to everything he makes. He tries to get me to eat right. You know, we've both had weight loss surgery, and mine failed, and his didn't. So we have food struggles together, and he wants me to lose weight to be healthy. And when it comes to food, it's my comfort and my addiction. As Bianca's weight climbed, she found herself at a breaking point, both physically and emotionally. Desperate for a change, she sought help from the one and only Dr. Now. If you've seen Dr. Now in action, you know he doesn't mince words. He told Bianca flat out that her life was on the line. This reality check hit hard. Bianca left his office with determination and dread, the world's weight on her shoulders, quite literally. Now, me, oh, I graze, eat, and just pick all day and just put stuff in my mouth all day. Well, uh, there's no operation that's going to correct that. So yes, sir. What's going to be different this time if you have a second chance? So I need to go through therapy and, and see, get down to the root of my emotional eating. Well, hold on. What do you mean emotional eating? Um, I eat when I get upset, when I get stressed. If you understand that, then why haven't you gone to therapy to address that before now? I'm not sure. Dr. Now laid down the law. Bianca needed to move to Houston, Texas to be closer for her surgery. But before she could even pack her bags, things got heated. She and Ramonte had a massive argument, leading to their breakup after three years. Ouch! Despite this setback, Bianca pressed on, moving to Houston with her cousin Neethi and her kids. Talk about determination! Uprooting your life is no small feat, especially under such stressful circumstances. You, you're gonna need to move to Houston. If you want to do the program, since you live so far away, is that something you think you can do too? I'll have to see, but I'll do whatever it takes because I'm about, you know, saving my life. So I'll do it, but I guess it depends on how soon I'll have to do that. Well, we'll see about that after you make it to the goal. So, did Bianca get the surgery? Yes, she did. After months of sticking to a strict diet and enduring Dr. Now's tough love, Bianca was approved for another gastric sleeve operation. The surgery succeeded, and Bianca's weight loss journey turned positive. By the end of the episode, she had shed 156 pounds, weighing in at 448 pounds. Her transformation was nothing short of inspiring. I know that wasn't easy for her with everything she had going on. But she's proving that she's determined to turn her life around, no matter what her situation is. So because of that, and since Dr. Paradise films, she's ready for this next step. We will move ahead with her weight loss surgery next month, as long as she keeps making progress.